hello guys so welcome again to this channel usena solutions so last time we we're talking about um infectious coriza where we talked how this disease can we identify it in our flock so we have discovered that there are a lot of factors that where we can see this disease how can we identify it and we have seen that this disease it is uh, generally a threat to to our beds and it's a threat even to our pockets because uh, it gives us um, high losses so today we're going to look on how is this how can we get this disease where are the possible or where are the possible places mainly do we get this disease like we said the main thing that transfers disease from one place to another are humans we as humans are the most thing that transfers disease from one place to another so be with me as we are going to talk about these places where you need to where you, if you visit such kind of places and then you really need to go home uh, when you have your your best there change your clothing uh, take new clothing so that you won't affect your best that's number one and then we are also going to look on how best can we treat this disease because yes we talked about how it is how can we identify it but today we are going to look how best can we treat it yes there are drugs that are available but how best can we incorporate or how best can we mingle how best can we mix this disease these um these are chemicals so that we have at the end of the day something that is tangible so that at the end of the day we manage to cure our beds and we manage to eliminate so guys let's work together and let's eliminate this uh infectious coriza so that uh, we have a health beds we have healthy life and then so that we we protect our pockets from being exploited by this kind of uh, disease so yes please stay tuned if it's your first time to be on this channel please don't please don't forget to subscribe subscribing you just press where it is written subscribe down there so uh it is high where are the highly susceptible places where we get this infection number one we have poultry shows so we have different types of poultry shows that we have for example in zimbabwe we have this um zimbabwe agricultural show where your best can get this uh, contamination we have what we call the swap meat the swap meat are those meetings that we go and we share ideas sometimes we do buying and selling on those the, the swap meat so yes you can also get uh, this uh, disease and also live uh, bed market where there is selling you know your barren music are there where there is buying and selling of, of uh, these chickens you can also uh, get the disease from there you can also get the disease from new flocks when new flocks come into your into your house remember uh, some of these beds they can become carriers believe me guys you can see a bed that is healthy with no any other symptoms that we've talked about uh, above them and then you know after that when you bring new flock and then you see this disease uh, appear in your flock yes uh, some beds are carriers which means they can come they can introduce this disease in your flock or at least you have no disease so make sure that when you have a new stock there are things that you need to do which are we are going to talk about uh, here so please note that eggs they don't carry infectious code. so when you buy eggs from um from a flock that is a bit affected by this disease the chicks that are produced they don't have infectious coriza however if the disease managed to survive outside outside the egg show or maybe the disease is within the incubator there is a high chance that this disease can affect your chickens as soon as they are hatched. but um i need to give you a tip the disease uh, is easy to cure especially when it is not in a horse when it is outside disinfectants are one of the best so yes that's how this bed can be transmitted so make sure whenever you are transporting your bed make sure whenever you are moving make sure whenever that is the other you are doing make sure you are not transmitting this disease from one flock to another so that's how the bed is transmitted yes we have the disease and it is affecting us so how best can we control this disease normally when you visit 
need is some best they advise you to use antibiotics. Yes, antibiotics does well, antibiotics they help, but antibiotics do not control or do not eliminate the bacteria within your blood. What they do, they just reduce the clinical signs and symptoms so that your beds, when you look at them, they look healthy, but there will be carriers of the bacteria. So what you need is you need sulfur-based drugs. Sulfur-based drugs or what you call uh, sulfanamide. Or, you know, the, the, these, uh, there are a lot of uh, sulfur we have bremamid, we have the sulfur there, yeah, a lot of them that you can give uh, to your beds. Yeah, you can you need also to check are these sulfur drugs uh, good in terms of can they cure um, respiratory diseases and they, can they cure also eye infections. Number two, as we said, this bacteria is easy to kill when it is outside. It's easy to eliminate when it is not in a host. So, staying of, um, how do you call this, staying of, um, of a disinfectant is one of the paramount things that you need to do. So, what are the steps when these diseases come to you, you notify this disease uh, within your flock? What do you do? Step number one, you separate a sick beds from those a sick beds are trying, because some of them will be sick, but they don't show no signs and symptoms. So what you need to do is you separate those that are showing these symptoms out of the flock, and then you treat these separately. So you treat both those that are sick and those that are not sick. How do you treat them? You give them the sulfur-based drug. So when giving them the sulfur-based drug, you give both the sick and the both those that are not showing these uh, symptoms. So yes, those are them, they'll be cured from inside. But I've discovered that you really need to go into step number two or step further, which is for those that are sick, number one, you remove the eye or you remove those white spots that you can see them from uh, the chicken. And then when you remove them, you now, uh, for secondary infection, you now clean that eye with uh, the antibiotics. We have antibiotics like alifro. So any antibiotic, normally the antibiotics they contain uh, what you call oxidation cycle. Okay, so let me guys talk in terms of um of medication before I go any further. So normally when you buy uh, these medications, don't buy the name like don't buy uh, the name like ESB3. Don't buy the name like um, um like a uh, Premamid. These are just trade names. When you buy, look at the back of your like like this. Look at the back of your of your chemical. Those components that you are seeing are the most important when you are buying chemicals. So, for example, when you are buying like ESB3 and Premamid, they all have the same active ingredient. So, when you are buying these, make sure you are not repeating the same chemical over and over again so you you are just buying the same ingredient so what we are talking about antibiotics normally antibiotics they contain what you call oxytetracycline otc so those when you're buying make sure that you buy uh, a drug you look at the back and when you see oxytetracycline then you say yes this is your antibiotic when you see a drug written sulfur something 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 at the back there then you now see it's a it's a sulfur drug also there are different types of uh, sulfur uh, drugs that you can get. So when you are buying two drugs of a different sulfur, make sure you look at the sulfur component which is uh, on the drug. So yes, you give the sulfur in water so that they drink and then secondly, you treat uh, the eyes with an, an antibiotic and then you do spraying on your, your forearm. Make sure you do, when you are being attacked or when we have been attacked, make sure you spray twice a week on a weekly basis when the the tension becomes lesser and lesser and lesser then you spray once every week and when it becomes lesser and lesser and lesser then you spray at least once after every fortnight so that's how you can try or that's how you can eliminate this disease in your area so remember this disease like i said number one it can stay up to two weeks in your flock so whenever day one to day three that is the infection time when your bed can just start
start to show symptoms. So when they start to show symptoms, that means uh, they can have this disease within them for up to two weeks. So after the two weeks, the disease can now stay in the in the manure or in your in your pool in your powder for about three months. After the three months, it can now stay also in the soil for another two to three months. So yes, you know, it can stay for up to a half a year, even up to a year. So we are saying a bird can have this disease and it shows the symptoms, you cure it, it suppresses it. So you can have the disease for years and years. So the best way is to go do uh, a lot of things that I'm going to talk about. So that was the control. And then let's now move to the prevention of the disease. Thank you guys for listening to this channel, Usena Solution. If it's your first time to be on this channel, don't forget to subscribe. Just click the subscription button and then don't forget also to click the notification bell so that you won't miss any video that we're going to upload. We're going to make a lot of videos so that you are going to learn. So please don't forget to subscribe. Also, don't forget to comment. If you have anything that you need to comment, anything uh, on our videos, on our trainings, please don't forget to comment. Comment on the comment section below so that we may improve uh, what we really need to understand or what we really need to know. Uh, if you have another topic that you wish to know, please uh, don't forget to, to also comment on the comment section below. Uh, we also, on our next video, are going to talk on how can we prevent. Because prevention is better than cure. So we are going to talk on the prevention part because we don't really need this disease to be in our flock. So we are going to talk on the prevention part of the disease. So please, yes, don't forget to subscribe. Smash the subscribe button and then smash the notification bell. Don't forget also to comment. Please comment, guys. I need your comments below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.